Hi there! This is a brand new made in China rock bass Corvette Basic. And this is a 2008 made in Germany Corvette Standard. Let's compare these two. I've been after a good Warwick bass ever since I saw a bass playthrough by my friend Jona from the band Everwave. The bass tone and how effortless his playing looked immediately made me want to know more about these basses and maybe someday get myself one. That day finally came late last year and now I am a proud owner of a Made in Germany 2008 Corvette Standard. I then contacted Warwick and they kindly sent me a rock bass Corvette Basic as a loaner to see how the two differ. So this video is sponsored by Warwick. Thank you Nicholas for your hospitality. Let's introduce the stars of the show. On the left here we've got my 2008 Made in Germany Corvette Standard and on the right we've got a brand new Made in China rock bass Corvette Basic. The specs on these two instruments differ a bit understandably, but we won't let that phase us. No two basses are ever truly alike, and the whole point here is to find out the differences. Let me know in the comments which bass you liked more. The Rock Bass Corvette Basic is the second cheapest model that Warwick currently offers, and will set you back around 7 to 800 euros in Europe. The Corvette Basic has an older body, and a bolt-on three-piece maple neck with stripes of a Kanga for added stability. For pickups, we've got the Made in Germany MEC Active Jazz Bass Noiseless Single Coil Pickups with a two-band EQ in the electronics. Then there's a Venge fretboard with 24 nickel silver frets and the standard scale length of 34 inches. Pretty standard specs here for this price range, except for the Active German-made MEC pickups and the Venge fingerboard. I'm a huge fan of older bodies with maple necks. That's a combination that can rarely go wrong. So specs-wise this base is already 100% there. There are also a few design choices that raise the bar even further, but I'll get into those later in the video. <laughs> My 2008 Corvette Standard, on the other hand, has a pretty standard early 2000s Warwick spec sheet. These bases are easy to find used in Europe and the price ranges all the way from 600 to 900 euros. The body seems to be made of ash with a bolt-on three-piece ovangle neck. For pickups this time we've got a passive set of MEC pickups with just your standard passive tone. No active bone to be found in this base. The Corvette Standard also features a Venge fretboard with 24 frets, this time made with the famed Warwick Bell Bronze. If you'd like to purchase a similar instrument as new these days, the Warwick team-built Made in Germany Corvette basses set you back around 2000 euros. 
that's a hefty price tag, but there is also a rumor going on that at the time Warwick was actually losing money for every Corvette standard they made. I don't really know if that's true or not, but it would make sense. quite a few design choices on these bases that I really enjoy and that are also unique for Warwick bases. The first thing I want to mention is this really cool adjustable nut that you can raise and lower any way you want. They humbly call this the just a nut, but I think it's a great invention. No need to file your nuts ever again. On the other end of the string is the Warwick 3D bridge, which also offers a lot of adjustments in a really robust design. All of the adjustments except for the intonation can also be locked into place, so you don't really have to fear those moving around. Both instruments have flawless fretwork as far as I can tell. The German bass has what Warwick calls the Invisible Fretwork Technology, or IFD for short. This leaves the edge of the fretboard completely intact and almost entirely eliminates fret sprout and provides a really smooth playing experience. The rock bass achieves kind of similar results by shortening the fret tang before slotting it into the fretboard and then using wood filler to fill in the gaps. This is a new thing for me since I'm more used to the classic Fender style, where the frets are slotted into the fretboard and then cut and filed flush with the fretboard edges. That makes any fret sprout immediately noticeable and very annoying. Before I've only seen this kind of design in my dingwall bases, but after researching it for a bit, the rock bass way seems quite common. At least Sire uses the similar wood filler thing, but many manufacturers also just slap a thin binding on the fretboard edges and call it a day. Now that I've spent an ungodly time rambling about fretboard edges and fret ends, maybe we can finally start butting headstocks. I've set up both bases with new strings from the same brand at the same gauge, and try to match the accent and pick up heights closely. Let's hear those tones.
So there's them tones compared. Something I noticed while recording it was that playing the rock bass was really effortless. It felt like the riffs were just flowing out from my fingers, while with the Corvette standard, I sometimes felt like I had to fight it a bit to get it where I wanted. The slimmer neck profile and the smooth satin finish on the rock bass really felt great. Tone-wise, this rock bass sounds just like a standard modern active bass. It has tons of output and completely overloaded my pork and pickle at first, but then I rebalanced the levels using my compressor. The top end is present and has that really nice Warwick clank without going overboard, and the bass end is solid and smooth and feels really controlled. I feel like this bass would be the perfect choice for any kind of funk, rock or metal gig. The Corvette standard feels much more situational than the rock bass. The tone here is really throaty, almost bordering on nasal at times, and the Warwick clank is much, much bitier, instead of the smooth but present top end on the rock bass. There's a profound difference at how the neck pickup sounds soloed as well, and I think you can hear the differences best there. Playing the standard model sometimes feels like you're battling against the bass. It's super resonant, but sometimes it feels like you have to work a bit harder to nail a clean take. My bass also has a slight twist on the fretboard at the treble side, which makes fretting around the 12th fret a bit difficult. To me, it has a strong personality that doesn't always fit the bill, but when it does, it nails it. I like the wooden feel of the neck and the added thickness makes me play a bit differently, which is always welcome. In addition to these tones and the specs we went over at the beginning, there's also some differences between these models that aren't outright mentioned at the specs. Let's start with the neck. On the Rockbase Corvette model, the neck profile is a slim C shape that you can find on many modern models, perhaps on the Schecter bases and it's definitely slimmer than a standard jazz bass. On the Corvette standard though, the neck profile is much thicker and rounder, almost reminiscent of old precision basses. For me, there's just a slight difference at playability, and that mainly makes me just play these two basses differently. Both necks feel really good. The other major difference is the shape of the forearm contour, and this is something that, according to pictures on their site, is only different between the old versions and the new versions. The new versions all have the same forearm contour. That contour is a rather standard soft roll-off between the top of the body and the side of the body, seen here. That roll-off is pretty mild on any standards, and the body is quite thin. So if you are a finger player and you rest your right hand on the body like this, it can be a bit uncomfortable. Then again, if you play with a pick or use your fingers with your elbow up like this, it's really comfortable. On the older Corvette standard, this contour isn't much of a contour, it's more of a cutout. As you might see over here, it's just a straight line with no curvature. Under your wrist, it may even feel a bit concave. The other difference between the body shapes is the roundness. The rock base Corvette has a clearly defined border between the flat top and the rounder parts, but hey, it's a cheaper base, so maybe we can excuse it for not having a super smooth round body, right? 
The design on these MEC pickups is also different these days, and my god I love the art deco vibe it has. A dark body with strong golden highlights always works for me. Obviously the active preamp and active pickups will cause a major difference in tone, and I usually strongly dislike any active preamps, but the MEC preamp is really good and really solid. All the EQ boosts and cuts are at just the right places where I want them to be. I think I might get a similar preamp for my other bass as well, so let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. So, if I was on the market for a really good Warwick bass, which one would I buy? My answer right now is the rock bass, and that's clear. But there are still a lot of things that I love about the Corvette standard. The Rock Bass Corvette Basic just nails a lot of things I like to see in an electric bass, straight out of the box. It's easily adjustable to a great playing condition without any specialized tools, the slim neck profile feels great and fast to play, and the tones work great without a huge amount of post-processing. I wouldn't necessarily say that these basses are affordable, because at 7 to 800 euros they are already quite pricey but they really do deliver for every penny you spend. The Made in Germany standard models are getting pretty old at this point, and buying a 15-year-old base used carries huge risks. While the specs are great and you're maybe getting a more valuable base for the money you spend, I've seen way too many of these standard model bases with a twist in the neck that the owner didn't know or care about. Storing a wooden instrument at suboptimal conditions for 15 years can have that effect. These aren't usually major, but fixing your bass into perfect playing condition can easily cost you 4 to 600 euros. I also discovered that I vastly prefer the tone of the rock bass model to that of the standard model. Although the output from the active preamp was a bit too much for me. I'd love to see Warwick offer a passive version of these rock bass Corvette basics or a push-pull control to activate the preamp. Overall, I'd rate the rock bass Corvette basic as a solid 9 out of 10 pi and anaya points. It plays really well and sounds great, but is a tad bit on the expensive side. Then again, it's not something that you'll be needing to upgrade anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching. I really like talking about bass gear and interesting gear in general and learning more about my instrument. If you're like me, I think you'll be satisfied with my future videos as well, so you might as well subscribe, that's over here. I've also added an interesting video that I think you'll like if you're still here, and that's over here. Take care and I'll see you later.